Uh, hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this class of tutorial, I want to show you how you can use this sphere trim uh, component that we have developed in Parametric House. And at the end of this tutorial, I want to also show you uh, the step by step uh, uh, algorithm and explain how we can make this from scratch. So what you can see here is a center point. The center point is the center of the sphere, uh, which you can easily change. Uh, after changing the center point, uh, this is actually a hemisphere. So you can define the radius. That is going to be the radius of the hemisphere. Uh, another thing we have here is a scale X and Y. Uh, what we actually are doing with this uh, sphere trim component is that we are trimming it with a rectangle and we can also give it a fillet. So you can give it zero so you can see the rectangle. Let me just make this a little bit smaller. Uh, so you can see the rectangle here. Uh, that is the location of the rectangle. You can change the position by using this UV component and the scale X and scale Y will define how much it's going to be scaled in the two directions you have. And so you can produce uh, two different uh, B reps with this. As you can see here uh, for the output, we have B rep one. If I bake this, you can see it here. And uh, let's just move that here. And the BREP2 is going to be like this. So as you can see here, we can get these two uh, BREPs uh, from the output and use it in our project. So let's get started and take a look at the algorithm. Uh, okay, let me explain this step by step. Uh, so first we have a point, which is the center point for the sphere. Uh, we have used the sphere. You can find it from the surface primitive sphere here and draw a sphere. Uh, as you can see here, we have a radius, which is obviously going to change the radius of the sphere. Uh, after producing a sphere, we can use the set utility isotrim component, uh, which if you reparameterize the surface, uh, the U direction here is going to be from zero to one, and the V direction is also going to be uh, from zero to one. Uh, for this one, we can use a construct domain two from the math domain construct domain 2. So as you can see by default the u minimum and maximum is 0 to 1 which is going to give us a complete part of the surface and the v minimum is 0 0.5 to 1. That is going to give us an isotrim something similar to this which is going to be the hemisphere uh, we're going to use in this project. Uh, after producing this uh, hemisphere what we have done is we have uh, find the wireframe uh, which is going to give you two set of curves. One is going to be the seam and one is going to be the circle. Uh, so we can pick that up with a list item. And if you zoom in, you can just add uh, from the index 0, 0 and 1, which is the first one is going to be, let me just connect the curve to this, uh, the circle down here. Uh, so what we want to do is to find the bounding box from this. This is going to be the bounding box. And uh, after producing the bounding box, we can scale this non-uniformly. So you can find this from transform uh, scale non-uniform. Uh, the plane is going to be the same uh, as the point we started. When you give a point uh, to the plane, it's going to be the XY plane. So this is going to be the plane. And obviously we can give different scale for X and Y. Uh, if I just turn this on and turn off the box, uh, you can see that this is going to be the scale X and this is going to be the scale Y. Okay, uh, after producing the scale, we can give it a fillet. So let's just turn on the fillet and turn off the rectangle. If it's zero, it's going to be a complete rectangle. When I increase it, it's going to be a complete fillet. Uh, you can play around with this. If you want to, you can go to surface utility. And uh, for example, you can use the fillet edge component. And for this one, you can define which edge you want to uh, make a fillet for this. So this is going to be more advanced if you want to uh, fillet at uh, uh, an edge. Uh, after we have the fillet, we just have to move it around. Uh, the reason I have added this moving thing is because we have more control over the location of this rectangle. Uh, to do that, I have defined the center of the hemisphere is obviously this point. And I have made another point for the vector for the movement. And that's evaluate surface. Uh, what I have done here is evaluated the circle here. Let me just show you the circle. And if I connect a surface to this, 
uh, it's going to assume it's going to evaluate this surface but because if I bake that surface but because this is a trim surface for example if I say untrim in Rhino and select the edges you can see it's going to be a complete rectangle so what we are doing is we are uh, defining a location on the rectangle so let me just change the location here you can see that it's moving about on this invisible uh, rectangle and uh, we're going to use uh, we're going to say move this rectangle uh, this uh, filleted rectangle from this point to this new point uh, this is going to give you more control over the shape okay uh, after moving the rectangle here uh, let me just delete that uh, what we want to do is to convert it into a surface, obviously, so we just give it a surface, and then we extrude it up. Uh, the uh, amount of extruding in the Z direction, which is going to be two times the radius, so we're going to get the radius here, uh, give it to the Z input, and say two times, so we just go up from the uh, sphere. Uh, after producing the extrusion, which is going to be something like this, uh, we're going to use this split BREP uh, from the intersection shape split BREP and we are saying that split this isotrim uh, with this solid. I'm going to turn this off and as you can see here it's going to give us two parts. One is this one and one is this one. So for example if I move the cutter uh, something similar to this you can see that we have three uh, BREPs. If I bake that we have this one, this one, and this one. So how can we say we need this one as one of the surfaces and these two as one of the groups? Uh, because maybe in uh, our project we want to give this uh, uh, maybe blue color to make it a window and these are like uh, another material. Uh, to do that I have added uh, an additional step. To do this what we do is, this is a technique I always use, uh, use the popular geometry vector uh, grid poplar geometry it produces a random point and just produce one random point on each of those surfaces so as you can see here one random point on this one on this one and this one then what we use here is to go to surface analyzes and use this point in BREP it says test whether a point is inside or uh, outside it and then we just test these points uh, from the extrusion which is this part right Obviously, the only uh, part which is inside this is this point. So you can see it's going to give you a series of true falses. And then you can use the set list dispatch to dispatch those three parts into two groups. So if I just turn everything off, you can see that we have one in one group and these two in another group. This is really useful if you want to just use that in another material and just give this a window, for example. Okay, now I can just play around and you can see that it's actually working. It's always going to give us the parts we are selecting as uh, part one or list A and the second one as list B. Uh, we have also developed another tool called Circles on BREP. Uh, so if you want to know more about this, you can check out the link below. Uh, what it does is that when we produce the BREP from the previous tool, which was this one, uh, we can give it to the poly surface input. Uh, there is a target length. So when we decrease that, it's going to give us more circles. And when I increase it, it's going to give us uh, less. Uh, we can define a multiplication for the radiuses. So if I make that, it's going to be smaller and bigger. Uh, then there is also something called um, an inclusion. So if I decrease that, you can see it's going to give us circles around the border, which is somehow useful if you want to add those circles around it. And if I just decrease that, you can see more of them here on the border. And if you just increase this number, it's going to go out from the group okay and then is a trim true or false so if I just hit this false it's not going to run uh, maybe you just want to see the circles so if I give this to the circles 
and go here and turn this preview a little bit down. Uh, this is going to be faster. And you can just change this faster too. Uh, you can have also the end gones, which is going to be something like this. And if, you, if I increase that, you can see that this is going to go also disappear. So I can have this end gones. And there is an end gone too, which is going to be the borders, something similar to this. And finally, if you want the result, which is going to be here, you just hit this true button and it's going to run. Uh, if you want to give it a uh, maybe some thickness. Uh, if you want to convert that into a solid, you can simply use the Pufferfish plugin surface and use this offset surface component and give it to here. And just give this a distance. Uh, if you want it to be both side, for example, I can say 0 0.2. Turn this off or disable it. Uh, give it to the distance on both side and make this, for example, uh, minus x divided by two and x divided by 2. That is going to give us uh, a complete thickness with this number. So if I just turn it on again, it's going to run and this surface is going to be at the middle of the solid. Uh, the create solid uh, has to be true, so remember to check that out too. And then if I just bake this, uh, you can see that you will have the solid and the surface is at the middle. And that is going to be the surface we have. The solid we have we can use it in our project uh, okay I'm going to explain uh, this uh, algorithm step by step uh, how we're going to produce the final results and uh, learn how to make the n-gons put them into two groups uh, put the circles and then uh, bring them back on the poly surfaces and then just make the holes uh, okay let's get started and learn this algorithm step by step and thanks for watching. Remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel so you get notified about our new lessons. And see you next time. Bye.